Okay, so this is our uh, first few problems in the series for practice unit three exam, <clears throat> where basically we're doing uh, all of our confidence interval hypothesis testing stuff, right? And so now we have a little bit of a review question. Um, a p-value indicates what? Um, and it's the probability that a null hypothesis is true. Um, that's not really what's going on here. Uh, the probability that the alternative hypothesis is true, this is definitely not true because the um, p-value um, always goes with the uh, null hypothesis. The probability of the observed statistic given the alternative hypothesis is true. Again, this is not going to be um, good because of the alternative hypothesis. The probability of the observed statistic given that the null hypothesis is true this is it. This is what makes us happy um, right here. So the answer is going to be D because the p-value measures the probability of our given sample being that far away from the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is true. Okay? So there is the answer to number one. Now let's go ahead and move to number two. <clears throat> um, a philosophy professor wants to find out whether the mean age of men in his large lecture class is equal to the mean age of women in his class. After collecting data from a random sample of his students, the professor tested the hypothesis that mu of m minus mu of w is equal to zero and the alternative hypothesis that is not equal to zero. The p-value for the test was 0 0.003. Okay, so this is this is a pretty small p-value, right? So um, the idea here is that if alpha is greater than your p-value, right, then we we reject um, the null hypothesis. So obviously this is what we're going to do. Okay, so there's a 0.03% chance that the mean ages of men and women are different. This doesn't seem very, you know, this isn't really what this means right here. Uh, there's a 0 0.03 chance that another sample will give the same results. Um, no, it's really about how another sample is this far away or further, right? So it's, uh, other samples could be much, much closer, right? So um, this is no... <coughs> Uh, it is very unlikely that the professor would see results like this if the mean age of men and women was equal. Yes, right? So this is kind of like a, a rejection of the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Remember, a p-value is the idea that you're going to observe this result, that you would see this result if the null hypothesis was true. And this is the null hypothesis right here, okay? And so you have a very low percentage, 0 0.003, uh, that the professor would see results like this if the mean age. And so this is a, a good one. Um, there's a 99.7% chance that a number of sample will give these same results. Uh, no. There's a 0.3% chance that the mean ages for men and women are equal. This is something where people mess up the p-value, okay? The p-value doesn't tell you the probability of the chance that they're equal. It tells you the probability of a result if the null hypothesis is true. So you have to be really careful with this language right here. A smaller p-value doesn't mean uh, a, a smaller chance that the mean ages are equal. All right, so you just, I know it's kind of weird, but, but E is not the right answer here. Okay, so let's go on to three. A truck company wants on-time delivery for 98% of its parts that they order. Uh, they have been ordering but will switch to a new cheaper manufacturer unless there is evidence that the new manufacturer cannot meet. I think this is really important, cannot meet the 98% on-time goal. The cannot meet is going to be a less than. So if we're going to test the truck company purchases a random sample and then determines which hypothesis should they use. Well, obviously, they want the null hypothesis to be the 0 0.08, right? They want that. 
these are all good right here these guys where you have the greater than less than um, these are going to be no bueno no hypothesis okay because we're going to assume that they can meet the 98 percent goal all right and then now what we're looking for is the cannot meet right the cannot meet and so what we want is something that's less than that's what we're assuming because greater than is okay but here less than is bad so these guys this is these are not going to be true and so three is going to be a okay and then number four uh, trainers need to estimate the level of fat in athletes to ensure good health initial tests were based on small sample but now the trainers doubled the sample size for a follow-up test the main purpose of a larger sample is to um, reduce non-response bias not really okay uh, you're you're doubling the sample size so you know you're you're getting enough of a sample now so it's not non-response bias uh, reduce response bias I could see how maybe you would feel like it was to reduce response bias um, but really it's more to get a representative sample to reduce confounding due to other variables actually a larger sample size may increase this so that's not good um, decrease the variability in the population it's not really to decrease the variability in the population it's to get a more representative sample that's generalizable to the population and in fact uh, we we do decrease the variability in the sample but not really in the population so that in the population is the wrong prepositional phrase there to decrease the standard deviation of the sampling model ah this is what happens when you get a larger sample you decrease the standard deviation of the sampling model not of the population but of the sampling model and so we have to say e here all right now this brings us to the end of the page and that makes us happy and so uh, stay tuned for part two